caffeine, the world's most popular drug. Some can't picture starting a day without that warm cup of coffee. The kickstart in our fast-paced society. It has evolved into a tool for many, a tool to stay awake. I feel like I function better on it. I can process more. I'm more efficient. So how bad can that be? Coffee is so associated with doing th things, thinking and doing work. When you get addicted to that feeling of being wide awake and together. There's a sense of community that takes place around a cup of coffee. You know, it's about community. It's about bringing people together. <laughs> I just can't live without it. And it's pathetic. Like, the only thing I need in life is like caffeine and cats. And maybe my cell phone. <laughs> Those are the three staples. There's a feeling going through me. Americans drink almost 30 gallons of the stuff per person each year. So these energy drinks may put kids at serious risk. When I was in college, I used to drink energy drinks and stuff to stay up at night to study for an exam. More than half of Americans drink coffee. They drink about 330 million cups a day. Caffeine, though associated with coffee by many, has its various channels to give consumers its buzz. Tea is sometimes forgotten as a source of caffeine, and it's the most widely consumed beverage in the world next to water. It can also be found in almost 80% of U.S. households. Coffee lends itself to more than 500 billion cups of coffee worldwide every year and is the second most valuable exported product after oil. On average, U.S. coffee drinkers consume three and a half cups a day apiece. So we put a coffee shop here, then we build one on this street corner, place a Starbucks there, another Starbucks down the block, McDonald's starts serving coffee, get your lattes via drive-thru, energy drinks are available in vending machines, credit cards accepted. Being at like an independent shop, we can dog on Starbucks, but they did open up like the interest in uh, coffee um, years ago. The Starbucks empire began from humble beginnings in 1971. Starbucks brought the European cafe style to American ground, then their coffee culture spread across the country and around the globe. They're more about like speed and like getting the drink out fast. People are in a hurry when they go to Starbucks, so I feel like the quality isn't as good as like your local coffee shop. America runs on caffeine. Those who work rely on it for a morning burst, an afternoon wake-up call, or support during a finals week all-nighter. My name is Jessica Powers. I'm a journalism and art major. My name is Brian. I am a junior business administration major with a concentration in computer information systems. My name is Caitlin Anderson. I'm an English education graduate student, first year. My name is Alyssa Ball. I'm a senior biochemistry major. My name is DJ O'Connor. I'm double majoring in chemical engineering and math. I'm a senior, and I would say I am a caffeine addict. And I'm a caffeine addict. And I am a caffeine addict. And I'm a caffeine addict. And I think I'm a caffeine addict. College students, of course, you know, we live, I lived on coffee to keep us going and keep going. But, you know, it, there comes a point of when it's not so good for you anymore. It's just a routine of my day. But I'm always like in this fuzz. I know I've heard that if you have one cup a day, you're addicted to coffee. To explore the addiction up close, we searched for five college students who agreed to be test subjects. The challenge was to give up caffeine, cold turkey, for one month. I've been drinking caffeine since I was at least 15. Um, in the morning, I usually have something with espresso in it. Um, and if I don't have one of those, I'll end up drinking like a Rockstar or a Red Bull in the afternoon. Usually the only thing that can like motivate me to not fall asleep at my desk is knowing that there's delicious hot coffee coming into my system. I'm... <laughs> nervous because it's like really become a part of my life this year it's just like I, it's like I need I crawl out of bed and I like need my coffee when I wake up or else I'm just like in my classes so it's, <laughs> it's gonna be a struggle I know I have to figure out another way to release like because part of it came from having that dependency came from stress so figuring out another stress relief tool to keep my mind off of needing caffeine, another way to keep my energy up. 
it's hard to sleep and hard to maintain life without caffeine. It's kind of hard not to stay caffeinated to get through the day. I'm not looking forward to all-nighters without caffeine or the headaches, but it'll be an experience. I vow to quit caffeine for one month. I vow to try my best to quit caffeine for a month. I vow to quit caffeine for one month. I vow to quit caffeine for one month. I vow to quit caffeine for one month. So it's Monday, October 31st, Halloween. I had to pull another all-nighter. It's past 7.30 in the morning right now. I have my painting and my print new. And they're done, but I haven't slept. And my class is at nine and I have to go and present my print. Um, I went right now and got decaf coffee. Hopefully that will help. I don't know what to do. Most of the time that I say it's misuse though with coffee is when you need it rather than just want it. That's how I explain it to my clients, is if they wake up in the morning and they need a cup of coffee, or at two o'clock in the afternoon, they need their Starbucks, then there's misuse going on. Caffeine, like every drug, has a molecular structure. When it enters the body, it is transferred almost instantly into the bloodstream. To understand how caffeine works, it's important to know what makes us tired, and that's adenosine. Adenosine molecules act as the messenger telling our brain that we need rest. Caffeine molecules, shaped almost exactly like adenosine molecules, block adenosine from delivering that message. Adrenaline instead of dopamine is produced, creating that fight or flight response associated with the caffeine buzz. When there's too much of a component, what it ends up doing is it starts damaging and downregulating the receptors. So now you have fewer and fewer receptors. The caffeine is working less and less well every time to do what it's supposed to do. So you need more and more to get the effect. Sometimes when I get a headache, I will just drink coffee. And, and but again, that's like, is that, that's probably better than taking, you know, ibuprofen or something for it. And the headaches come from all these hormones and these um, receptors trying to get back into normalcy again when you just cold turkey coffee. I drink a lot of coffee. I have days where I drink more. I just kind of like try to listen to my body. You're starting to have, you know, your really sweet coffee drinks and um, coffee ice cream and then the energy drinks that all are basically soda pop with a whole lot of, or Mountain Dew, those kinds of things with a whole lot of caffeine in there. Now you're adding in the problem of sugar. And that's almost to me more unhealthy than too much caffeine um, just because, you know, our bodies just really aren't built to break down sugars. Now when you're doing an energy drink, not only are you getting more caffeine than you would ever get in a normal cup of coffee. I mean, it's some, what is it, 20 times more in some of them? to keep you awake, you know, or to, to give you that buzz, but now you've got the added sugar involved because most of them are not sugar-free. And then if you do do the sugar-free, then you have the problem of having the um, alternative sugars, the, you know, the Splenda and the aspartame, that's affecting your brain too. So the whole thing with energy drinks are just the devil. <laughs> Caffeine as a recognizable stimulant finds its roots in the popular global drink of coffee. In fact, one could say that caffeine was an accident encountered by goats. An Ethiopian goat herder one day realizes that this tiny red berry is to blame for his goat's restlessness through the night. The goat herder tries a sample for himself. Caffeine is born, the solution to a tired mind. Things really start to roast when caffeine becomes a popular commodity in today's modern world after coffee finds its way into European culture. It was a time when thoughts and ideas from around the world were being learned and taught, technology growing at an exponential level, new land being discovered. Columbus's fourth voyage marks a significant turning point in the history of caffeine. It was this voyage that led Columbus to modern day Central America. Cocoa was still a hot topic for the Aztec and Mayan natives and had spread at an outstanding rate. When Columbus stumbled upon a canoe full of cocoa, he discovered its energetic powers. Excited about his finding, he presented it to Ferdinand and Isabella in Spain. Europe finds a new drug. 
forever immortalizing and fostering itself into an addictive society. How is it going? Um, okay. So, hopefully you can cut that part out. This is a week without caffeine, and I just got my first Starbucks since then, but it is decaf, and I'll show you. Um, I'm not getting headaches anymore, but I'm still tired and feel like the afternoon is nap time. So, we'll see how it goes. There's actually some benefits in having the caffeine from coffee and tea. And I drink a lot of coffee. I have days where I drink more. I just kind of like try to listen to my body and drink less when I'm not feeling very well and maybe switch to tea some days. When it comes to green and white teas, you don't need to worry about doing decaf because the caffeine in them is slightly altered in the tea form, in the green tea form, and it also has polyphenols, specific polyphenols, um, uh, phytonutrients in there that actually help your liver process the caffeine. So I'm trying to really get people to focus more on the quality and the flavor of the coffee instead of uh, coffee with a whole bunch of milk and syrup and sugar and stuff in it. One or two cups of coffee or black tea per day is actually rather helpful for you if you're having well-made, well-grown coffee. Coffee as a culture is, to me, as a tea drinker, is all about go, go, go. And tea to me is about slowing down the meditation of tea, the communication of tea, the community of tea. So today I'm going to talk about five different types of tea, or five different teas, and their caffeine and how they're a little bit different. The first one we're going to talk about is uh, Dragon Well, it's a green tea from China. This green tea we're going to brew at about 160, 165 degrees for two minutes, so very short, steep time. It's a nice pale green golden color, okay, and oh, it's got a wonderful vegetal type flavor to it. I know I'm drinking something green, um, and then The second one is a second flush Darjeeling. It's a black tea from India. It's got kind of that classic tea color. <laughs> mm, delicious. Third is we're going to talk about matcha, which is a powdered green tea from Japan. And so when you, when you brew the powder, it, um, it, uh, it dissolves, kind of like hot chocolate. So when we're done, when you drink it, there's nothing left. Fourth, uh, is chocolate tea. The chocolate tea is caffeine free. It's got about the, well, it has about the same amount of caffeine as a decaf coffee, you know, four or five milligrams, something like that. But all the calories, there's no calories. So it's a great after dinner tea, um, evening tea. Uh, I have my kids drinking it at night before bed instead of asking for hot chocolate. We'll go to the last thing, yerba mate. It comes from South America and it's typically drunk in a gourd. I have over mate in my time. Uh, and so um, I don't drink a lot anymore. And probably this little bit will get me a little, a little jittery. The thing that uh, changes the amount of caffeine in tea is both the temperature of the water that you use and the length of time that you steep it. So, I'm on my second actual day of not drinking caffeine, so we're going to try and make it again through tomorrow. I'm not driving tomorrow, so that is feasible, and we'll try again, but if I feel miserable, I'll probably end up caving. I, I love it, though. I'm desperate. Like, I feel like an addict. I feel like the world moves in slow motion without the coffee. Like, the colors are deadened, and nothing is exciting. I have no personality. People are like, Oh man, what's wrong with you? So, it was another one of those days today. So, we'll try again tomorrow. All right. Well, you know, I think the story goes everything in moderation, and I think that applies to coffee or anything. We have a ton of regulars that come in, just they come in for the coffee and the food, but I think they also come in for like the atmosphere and the baristas are really friendly and they just want like that sense of like family and community. I think it's directly connected to like socialization, which is a really interesting thing. You have bars where alcohol lubricates people's like personalities and, and brings out demons in some people and things like that, but coffee is pretty much, and there's always like alternatives when you go to a coffee shop, so it's, just, it's a place where you can 
really you know, be well met with somebody. As long as it's not something that you need to be able to function and be yourself, then it's acceptable to drink and have in your life. I feel like I succeeded because I went a month almost completely having no caffeine. I uh, went through this internal struggle because I failed miserably. <laughs> However, part of me wanted to say that I went 30 days without caffeine, but that's just preposterous. Since technically the goal of the, the trial was to get off of caffeine, I failed because I was drinking caffeine all the time and I had my coffee. I succeeded. I did succeed in the trial. I went the entire 30 days without caffeine. I was at wit's end. So, you know, early morning working on projects and I needed to stay up for my early morning class too, so. I was told on more than one time that I had gone, on the days I'd gone without caffeine, by one of my friends or family members that I needed to go ahead and have a cup of coffee because I had no personality. Like, I finally like, understand why my mom needs coffee every morning because it gets her a little like, kick in her step. So I think I just grew up around that and now I'm like, oh, like this is what people do. They drink coffee every morning. Uh, physically at the beginning, I felt pretty awful. The first couple of days I went through like withdrawals, I got really tired and I got headaches. I'm not gonna be as strict about it. Now that the 30 days are over, I have had a soda since then, but I, I know for a fact I'm not gonna drink as nearly as much as I have been, but I'm not gonna completely abstain from it. Once I really enjoy doing something, I want to keep doing it. And as long as it's not hurting me, I don't usually really have an issue with it. And so the caffeine doesn't hurt me. I don't drink huge amounts of it. So why not keep enjoying it? It was interesting. I'm glad I did it. I'm glad I proved that I could stay off of caffeine, at least to myself, if not to anybody else. But yeah, I thought it was good. It never got easier. I've had times when I dropped caffeine that it did get easier toward the end. Um, but this one, I was just like, this was the worst month of my life. But I definitely think it's normal and expected in college culture. Um, you know, like coffee shops are a good place to study or people are staying up for a long time and everybody's like, oh, brew a pot of coffee or like go get a Red Bull. So I definitely think that it's normal in college culture, yes. I'm just glad that I was able to do it because I, after looking at it in hindsight, knowing how much caffeine I was drinking, how, da how dangerous the amount of caffeine I was drinking, so I'm really glad that I did this. Caffeine is the oil to a high-functioning society. It's a substance, a stimulant, a drug. When used right, it can be a miracle. When abused, it can be a headache. Caffeine runs the world, no doubt. It influences the global economy, energizes our mind, and draws us together as a social community. Without it, could you stay awake?